What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. And this one is some of my final thoughts ahead of the game week seven deadline. So I'm going to go through the latest press conference information as well as answering some of your questions as well. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And there is still time to get signed up to Fancy Football Hub. 30% off at the moment and a seven-day free trial. And if you get signed up and don't win your mini league, they will give you your money back. There are terms and conditions for that. Make sure you check them out before signing up. But that offer will be stopping once this game week seven deadline has gone. So if you're going to do it, now is the time. Make sure to check that out. All the links you need are in the description below. All right, let's go through the latest Arsenal news. And there was quite a lot from Mikel Arteta in his press conference today. So this is what he's had to say about a bunch of players. Uh, on Rice, he said Declan wasn't available for Brentford. So that was the midweek Carabao Cup game. And he hasn't trained yet. He went on to say we have another session in an hour or two. So we'll have more news about him today. So the press conference was before their next training session. So it could be that players will be included in that session and then be fine for the weekend. But unfortunately, we're probably not going to know about that before we have to make our decisions. He went on to say... It's regrettably the same situation for wingers Gabriel Martinelli and Leandro Trossard, neither of whom were in the squad against Spurs and neither of whom have trained since. Arteta said, we want them back, we need them back, but at the moment they have not been available. Then he went on to talk about Bakayo Saka, uh, who's also been out of action since picking up a knock in last, Sunday's, uh, last Sunday's North London derby. And Arteta said, the assessment is okay, is he fit enough and good enough to be able to be selected tomorrow? That's the question mark. And so far, he hasn't trained with the team. So Saka, like uh, Martinelli, Trossard and Rice, up until maybe Friday's afternoon session, also hasn't trained. But I think when you look at the full quote on the website versus kind of what came up on Twitter, I think the assessment being okay... And the only question mark whether he's fit enough to start is kind of good news for Saka. And let's not forget, I know people are saying Champions League, Man City coming up very soon. They're not going to want to risk him. Whenever Saka is available, he always starts. So I think that's quite positive. Uh, he then went on to say, and there's loads, like I said, there's loads of players he went through. To add insult to injury, both William Saliba and Fabio Vieira were absent from Wednesday's Carabao Cup win over Brentford, and Arteta admits they are all in the same pool. William had a knock, so that's Saliba, and Fabio wasn't involved in the last game, so we have to assess them today to see how they are. Now, before you all panic that William Saliba is flagged in FPL, Arteta is one of those managers where you have to take everything he says with a pinch of salt. I won't bet my house, because my wife wouldn't be happy with that, but I would bet a lot of money that Saliba is in that starting eleven for the Bournemouth game. I think a lot of managers have kind of come out and spoken about possible knocks for players that didn't play in the Carabao Cup, when really they just wanted to rest them, because that competition is the least important of the four that teams in Europe are in. So I know he said that Saliba's got a knock, but I would just ignore that. If you've got Saliba, I would probably just play him. Like, I could be wrong, and Arteta could be correct in that he has got a knock, and there is a possibility that he misses out, and that could happen, but I would find it extremely unlikely. On Saka, I think there is more of an issue there because we saw him go off early, and he did seem to be limping, but I do think that's quite positive. I will probably stick with what I said on a video the other day. If you've got a spare transfer, and you were going to get rid of him for game weeks 8 to 9 anyway when they got Man City at home, Chelsea away... Fair enough. Maybe you just bring that move forward, especially if you want someone like Son, who's got Liverpool at home, Luton away, Fulham at home. But if it's going to take a hit and you've got a good bench, then I'd assess that a bit more carefully. Like for me, I've got Archer first sub, Estupinian second sub. Can I guarantee that the player I bring in definitely scores four more points than either of those? I'm not so sure. So I think it's going to come down to your own team. I think if you're like me and you've already got Son and Saka, then selling him to Madison could still be a good move, but it's not quite as exciting as getting Son. So I'm kind of in a different position to a lot of other people who really want Son, and now Saka is the easiest way to do it. But like I said, I'd put a lot of money on Saliba starting. I'd probably put slightly less money on, but I still think I would bet heavily towards Saka starting as well. And I wouldn't be surprised if Rice is in that team too. I think Arteta spoke about a lot of players that haven't trained have got knocks. I reckon we're going to see Rea, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Zinchenko, probably Rice, probably Fabio Vieira, al uh, Vieira alongside Odegaard, then probably Saka and Ketia Jesus, just like in the Spurs game. Whether or not Trossard will be back, I don't know. And Marseille does seem to be out. But the rest of them, 
they'll probably be okay i would say we've got a bit more definitive news on ben chilwell it does look like he's going to be out and his arkinsella said that chilwell is expected to be out for four weeks with a hamstring problem but early assessments have played down fears of a more significant injury pochettino has also held his press conference and said that it's bad but it needs to be assessed either way from an fpl point of view he's going to have to go sooner rather than later you're going to at least miss game week seven and eight and after that the fixtures turn anyway i probably wouldn't want any Chelsea players um, I'm not going to go through in great detail the best replacements so I've already done that on the game week preview but I think you're basically looking at Newcastle defenders possibly cash possibly Dallow if you want to take a bit more of a punt as well and in and around that price they are the players to look at possibly Liverpool defenders in a few weeks but I'm not sure now is the right time to buy them with Spurs away and Brighton away so yeah Chilwell is out usual scenarios um, kind of apply here if it's going to be for a four point hit and you've got three playing defenders and you don't want to take a hit to get another defender in absolutely fair enough whether it's this week next week game week nine whatever it is he's going to have to go at some point all right let's discuss what Eddie Howe said in his press conference today and like Mikel Arteta he's another manager that I don't always take what he says at face value but he did give us a lot of updates about different players so let's run through them on Callum Wilson and Sven Botman he said we're gonna see today Callum has very minor hamstring tightness we'll give him every chance of being available same with Sven we'll make a late check on him and then on Alexander Isak, he said he's another one we'll need to make a late check on that's the cost of having three games in a week it's usually the third game where these things build up although to be fair on Isak and Wilson only one of them has started the last couple of games right Isak started midweek in the Carabao Cup and Wilson started at the weekend so it's not like they're all playing all three of these games on Callum Wilson I am a little bit less sure about him just because he has had injury issues in the past but if it is very minor hamstring tightness like Howard said and he is available then given that Isak just started you'd assume that Wilson will start in the league this week against Burnley so if you already own him I'd probably keep hold of him if you were looking to buy a Newcastle forward I'd still worry a little bit about rotation moving forward I think the time to go for Wilson was probably last week for Sheffield United and Burnley and then reassess afterwards would I go in for one now probably not on Botman this feels exactly like Saliba for Arsenal I would say look, I can't say 100% but I'd be 99% certain that Botman will start I am not worried about that flag in FPL at all I think it'll be Trippier Cher Botman and Dan Byrne, just like always um so yeah of course there's some slight doubts there because he is flagged and um Eddie Howe has said we'll make a late check on him but I'm pretty sure he's going to be in that lineup so I wouldn't worry too much there was more definitive news around Harvey Barnes he said we think he's going to be out for around three months no surgery required which is good news but his foot is now in a boot uh, it's an injury underneath his toe he's now started his recovery and he's got to rest to let it recover then we can will, uh, build him back up again most people don't own Harvey Barnes anyway if you do it's now time to sell him the key here is really Anthony Gordon for those of you that might want a cheaper player to enable other moves elsewhere he could be an option they've got Burnley at home West Ham away Palace at home and Wolves away and he's only what is it yeah I'm on the right page here I think he's like 5.5 million unless he's gone up in price uh, yeah 5.6 million so as an enabler he looks pretty good he's already got two goals three assists for Newcastle and I've got to be honest it's starting to look like lots of people myself included were just wrong about him i think when chelsea were looking to spend so much money i did have question marks about that and obviously newcastle came in for him and he has looked very good this season the one key thing which i know people will point out is he is on four yellow cards already so if he gets one more he will be suspended but if you've got playing players on your bench like cameron archer for example and Gordon's coming in as an enabler i don't think it's a huge concern like if by getting gordon you can then get salah easy uh, or easier and then gordon gets suspended you've got someone on your bench that can come on for that one week and i don't think you're going to be looking to have to get rid of him for a while anyway like right up until game week 12 where they got bournemouth away would probably be okay am i looking to bring gordon in myself no not really my plan has been to kind of stick with most of the midfielders i've got and then look to get Salah later on wildcard but for those of you that aren't doing that that don't have enough cash to go to an Eze or a Matoma or a Diaby whoever it is I think Gordon looks like a, a better option now so yeah from the press conference today Gordon looking good 
I still think Wilson will start, but I'm a, li a little bit less sure just because of past uh, injury record. On Botman, again, I'm, I'm so certain he's going to start. I'm just not worried at all. So let's quickly talk about Man United because they do have some issues, especially in defence. So it was confirmed today that Lissandro Martinez is going to be out for an extended period. I've seen timescales of kind of two to three months going around. So the first choice left centre-back is out. And also the lone backup left back is also out. Regulon is injured. He's going to miss at least Crystal Palace at home, possibly Brentford at home as well. And he might not be back until after the international break. So that's not ideal. The reason that I'm bringing this up is because I did have a question in the game week preview, which I didn't get to, about whether or not to keep Anana. And obviously, stuff like this, like these this injury news. And just general performances will probably put people off buying Man United defend, uh, defensive options anyway. But obviously, it's a different conversation if you've already got them and you're thinking about getting rid. And I would just say Crystal Palace at home, Brentford at home, and Sheffield United away on paper is just not that bad. And I think goalkeeper transfers are perfectly fine to do, but they are such low upside. And I think with everything else going on at the moment, double game week, obviously preparing to maybe try and get Salah in your team, possibly flags in your uh, FPL squad as well, is now the time to be moving off Anana before a home game against Crystal Palace at home, it's probably not worth it. So unless your squad is perfect and you've got that spare transfer, I'd probably just keep hold of him. And if you haven't yet used your wild card, that's probably going to be the time to switch your goalkeeper. I have mentioned Dallo as an option possibly to bring in for FPL. Probably would be a short-term punt. So again, for anyone that's looking to wild card in game week 10, the next three fixtures aren't that bad. I guess these injuries do put slight question marks over where he's going to be in that back four. Like in terms of... When everyone is fit, the first choice back four is obviously Luke Shaw, Martinez, Varane. I would say that Dallow is part of that. So two of the back four, at least, are fit. Um, but I just don't know if he's going to play right back or left back. And I think if he does play left back, that does dent his attacking appeal a little bit. We've seen that Amrabat, for example, could be used as a fullback. So it could be Dallow right back then uh, Varane, and then one of Lindelof or Maguire, or even Evans, I guess, and then possibly Amrabat on the left moving into midfield. But it could also just be that Dallo plays left back, and then it's Maguire, Varane, Lindelof right back. I just don't really know exactly how they're going to set up, but I guess that might be enough to kind of put me off going for that pun. But I just think for all the defenders you could go for right now, and I'm not trying to massively talk people into going for Dallo, but again, if you don't want to go for more than one Newcastle defender... And you don't want to go for Matt Cash before Brighton because they'll probably concede. There's not a huge amount of obvious defenders to go for. And if Dallow does play right back, he's good for bonus and got that uh, potential attacking uh, threat as well. So, yeah, it's an okay punt for a lot of people. But most people can just ignore Man United defence completely. Uh, and Anthony is back training and now available as well. So in terms of attacking options at United, obviously Rashford left. Hoyland through the middle, Fernandez 10, that's always going to happen. Casemiro's there, Amrabat's back, Mount is back as well, now Anthony. United are starting to get a few players back in attack when they're losing players in defence. So I think if you've got the likes of Rashford or Fernandez, of course, you can sell them if you've got spare transfers, you want to get Son, you want to get Madison, no issues with that whatsoever. Luton away, Fulham at home in game weeks 8 and 9 especially look really good, and I'm sure Spurs will sc uh, score against Liverpool. But if you've not, if you if you're looking at taking them out for a hit, I just don't think it's worth it. I think just give them a couple more games, back to back home games at Old Trafford. They're okay to keep, like they're okay to sell. I get it. People are frustrated with them. But they really are just okay to keep as well. So speaking of Son and Madison, let's look at the latest Spurs team news. Ange Postacoglu confirmed today that Brennan Johnson is going to be out of the Liverpool game. He did say it's nothing too serious, but he's not going to play in game week seven. Now, as an FPL pick, it obviously doesn't matter. Most people don't own him, but it does have a knock on to how Spurs might set up. Because against Arsenal, he was left wing, Kuliseski was right, and obviously Son was through the middle. So if Johnson's not available, and neither is obviously Perisic because he's out for most of the season, the only other option there is Solomon. Unless, of course, you play Richarlison through the middle and move Son to the left. Now, if Son is available, I don't think that's going to happen. Not against Liverpool. I'd be pretty sure he's going to play number nine. I think given that he's played it three times in a row and been very good in that role, I think it will continue. But it would be interesting to see what would happen if Perisic and Johnson weren't available for a while. And it was just Solomon. Would he play him every game? Would he play Richarlison out there? I don't think so. I think when Richarlison plays, it will be as a number nine. But that's probably nothing to worry about right now. I think Son plays through the middle against Liverpool. And Johnson will probably be back after that anyway. In terms of Madison and Son, uh, Postacogli said they trained today on Friday. I did see a tweet from Paul O'Keefe that usually has good uh, Spurs info as well. To say that they've been training since Thursday. 
So that's a bit of an extra positive. Um, Postacoli said, we will see how they pull up after training. Now, Spurs posted a clip of him talking about that. And he also said... Um, that they kind of came through everything that they wanted them to do today. So it's just about how they react afterwards. I think if that's the case, they they start against Liverpool, don't they? If they're fit and available, how do you leave those two out? In terms of attack, they're probably Spurs' most uh, two most important players. And then after that, you just got to hope they're fit for Luton and Fulham. So if you're looking to bring either in... I don't think there's a mad rush to get them for the Liverpool game. I know we're all expecting Spurs to score, but I don't think it's an easy game, right? Obviously, being at home uh, is a little bit easier than going away to Arsenal. I get that. But it's not a must. They're not must-haves for this game. It's really eight and nine where the points are coming, right? Looting away and Fulham at home. But if, for example, you've got that spare transfer for Saka, you just want to get it done, you don't want that worry about whether or not he's going to start, and you want to go for a Spurs player and said, I think it looks pretty good. Obviously, it would have been better... If Postacoglu would come out and said they're fully fit, they're going to start tomorrow. But you very rarely get that from a Premier League manager. I think what he said is good enough to make me confident they're probably both going to start. All right, let's discuss game week seven captaincy. And I think there's only really a decision to be made here if you've got both Haaland and Morris. If you're like me where you've only got Haaland, then he probably is the standout captain. There are other players and fixtures that you could look to target. But there's enough doubts there that I probably just wouldn't do it. So, for example, Arsenal against Bournemouth. Saka could be an option, but he's a slight doubt to start. Most people aren't going to captain an Everton player against Luton, although I am going to talk about their attackers later on. You've got Rashford and Fernandes against Palace at home. Most people don't want to do that. Wilson against Burnley at home, possibly an option. But again, doubts over whether he's going to start. And then you've got the Spurs versus Liverpool game. Now, that absolutely could be a game like arsenal versus spurs that finishes like two all maybe three two something like that but i'm not sure i'd be confident enough to bet on it to go for a son or a madison or a salar i guess they are alternative options but harlan versus wolves away just looks like the best case unless of course you've got morris now i'm still not 100 percent sure where i stand here but i think if i had if i had both players and i had to lock it in now I think I'd just be more comfortable going for Haaland. I always want to back the double game weaker, but in this case, it is quite difficult. And any week you go against Haaland always has the chance of being painful because it feels like he starts on one goal. Like, would anyone say he's definitely not going to score against Wolves? Probably not. So if he gets one goal, no bonus. That's already six points. Now, the beauty of double game weakers are the extra appearance points. So with someone like Morris... He's, he's pretty much guaranteed to play both games. He's going to get past 60 minutes. So as long as he doesn't get a yellow card, and we have seen players get red cards in double game weeks before, but let's say he doesn't get a yellow, then he's already on four points. So he's already, sorry, he's only two points behind Haaland without getting an attacking return. And if Haaland does have an off day and Morris can get at least one return, then suddenly he's ahead of him. But of course, the opposite could happen and Haaland could walk away with a brace or a hat trick or something like that. I've seen quite a lot of discussion on this one kind of argument that i liked was that morris's floor is a little bit higher in terms of he's going to probably get four points for appearances as if he gets one goal then you're already at kind of eight ten points etc but harlan's ceiling is much higher because he is someone that you could see getting multiple returns in any game whereas with morris i'm not quite sure that is there like does anyone expect him to get a brace in any match even everton away and burnley at home probably not and I guess if I said to you right now that Luton have only scored two goals across the double game week, would that be a surprise? Probably not. And then you've just got to hope that Morris is involved in at least one of them. Best case scenario in both. It could be that Luton, because of the fixtures, go and score four or five goals across these fixtures, right? These things can happen, right? It's all ifs, buts, and maybes. But I just think before the games, could I see Harlan scoring a brace or a hat-trick against Wolves? It definitely could happen. I think if it was a home game... There'd, all be, there'd almost be no debate to be had. It's only because it's an away one. Could I see Morris scoring that many goals? Probably not. And the ownership of Haaland is going to be so high. I think when you do go against him, you've got to be pretty confident there's a chance that the other player outscores him. So my general advice would be, and, and I've said this before, it's very difficult to give an opinion on something when you don't actually have to go through with it. My advice would be, if you're unsure... If you're really unsure who is the best just go for Haaland I think um if you're leaning towards Morris and you want to back the double game I don't think there's any issue with that whatsoever as long as you're prepared for what could happen in terms of worst case scenario which could be two Morris blanks and a brace or or um hat trick for Haaland I don't know I all I can end this with is to say if you go for Morris I really hope it works out I always 
like it unless I get absolutely destroyed in terms of overall rank. I always like it when the player, when people go against Harlan, it works out because I think it's just so easy for like most of the 38 game weeks to just captain Harlan. I just, the fact that I've hesitated on it all week tells me that I'm not confident in Morris at all. Like in previous double game weeks, I've been like, yeah, definitely going for the double. I don't care about anyone else, even Harland. But this week, I'm just not sure. And I've not even given it any thought about bringing him in. It would be for a hit. But in previous doubles, I would take that hit to get that extra fixture and then have them afterwards. With Morris, I just don't really want to have him in my team that too long term. So I'm kind of going off on a tangent here about transfers um, and holding him rather than captaincy. But yeah, I think right now, if I had to lock it in, I'd go Harlan. I think if I own both of them, by the time I got to the deadline, I might change my mind to Morris just because I'd want to go for the doubler. But right now, I think Harlan probably is the best. It kind of pains me to say that. So here's a question that you don't get asked every week. Would an Everton attacker be a good differential for the next two game weeks before wildcard? If so, which one? So just to say straight away, if you're not wildcarding in game week nine, I definitely wouldn't go for Everton attackers. They're not players that you're going to want to be stuck with long term. But they do have two really nice fixtures, Luton at home and Bournemouth at home next two game weeks. It doesn't really get better than that. I did have a quick look on the fixture analyzer on Fantasy Football Hub. If you want to check this out, links in the description below. So just for the next two game weeks in terms of attack, who has the best fixtures? Now, Luton and Burnley are always going to be at the top because they've got that extra game week. Uh, sorry, that extra fixture this week so they've got three in the next two so obviously if you were looking for a forward i probably would go morris over like a beto um for everton for example but let's say you don't want to go for either of the double game week teams then the next team is everton so according to the analyzer they are the next best in terms of fixtures and even if you change it to who's going to score the most goals so that obviously takes into account the attacking threat of the team and the defenses they're playing against Everton is still kind of in top six for the next two games so things do look pretty good I don't know if there's really many other teams that have got two better fixtures than that so I get the idea of looking at them I guess West Ham have got Sheffield United at home Newcastle at home you could look at that but I really wouldn't want to be stuck with them um, if you're going to go for it I think it has to be Beto as a forward or McNeil as a midfielder. DeCorey did look really good against Brentford. I think it was him that hit the bar as well. And we have seen in the past that he does like to get forward where possible. But I think if I was going to go for one of them, it would be McNeil. But then it comes down to who are you going to sell from your midfield? Like Even if you look at mine, and your midfield might be different, of course. But I've got Son, Rashford, Fernandes, and Burmo, Saka. I mean, other players that are popular that a lot of people have, Matoma, obviously Foden as well. Some people have got James Madison. Some people have got Diaby. Like, who of those midfielders are we replacing for McNeil? It just When you say it out loud, it just doesn't sound right. I think with um, Beto, it's a little bit different because Alvarez has obviously got Wolves away this week and Arsenal away next week. If you don't want Morris, fair enough. There's not maybe a huge amount of other standout attackers but he's always going to get subbed early because of Calvert-Lewin now I do think he'll start because Calvert-Lewin started midweek but you can see in the last couple of games he's come off at 62 65 so it's not like you're getting 80 to 90 minutes but as in the question this isn't who's a guaranteed player to get me loads of points in the next couple of weeks it's who's a differential and in this case a massive punt to have a bit of fun and if that's the case then maybe you could go for him but there are alternatives like Mikel Antonio for example at West Ham you could go for Hoyland he's got back-to-back -back home games as well Everton's not really where I would be looking but I respect it right two game weeks then you're going to wild card on paper they got two excellent fixtures you could look at it McNeil or Beto they're they're the two players whether you've got a midfield or forward spot obviously that will come down to your team individually so nice and simple, how would you currently rank the Newcastle defenders? And I would say that my opinion on this hasn't really changed too much over the last couple of weeks. If money is no object, I would say Trippy is the best, then Cher, then Botman, then Dan Byrne. But obviously money is always a factor, so I will expand on that answer a little bit. With Dan Byrne, a few people have asked me why I don't mention him more often. He is now the cheapest of the back four at 4.5 million. The only reason is it only costs 0 0.2 more to get Botman, and I think he is absolutely nailed. And if any of these defenders were given a rest in a Premier League game, I just think Dan Byrne is the most likely. I don't think that's going to happen over the next couple of weeks. I mean, it could be that these four play the next six, seven, eight, nine games in a row, right? That absolutely could happen. But I just think someone like Lewis Hall coming in for Dan Byrne is much more likely than Liveramento coming in for Trippier or one of the centre-backs being replaced. I could be wrong on that. 
And like I said, it probably won't happen. But that's just how I feel. And I'd rather spend that extra 0 0.2 million for Botman. With Fabian Share, we did see last season that his goal threat tended to be a bit higher than Botman. But Botman has already scored this season. So it's not like Botman is a slouch from set pieces. But I still think based on what we saw last season, Share probably is worth the extra 0 0.3 million. Because he's 5 and Botman's 4.7. But if money is really tight right now, and it's looking like over the next couple of weeks you might be priced out of a few moves, then I would absolutely be happy with having Sven Botman in my team, right? Even with the flag that he's currently got on, I'm pretty sure he's going to play. So in terms of standout value in a good defense for a player that's 100% nailed on, Botman probably is the one to go for. And then obviously Trippier is much more expensive than all of them, but we've seen what he can do against Sheffield United. He is likely to create a lot of chances, way more than the other three. Like um, any of those three, right? Botman, Byrne and Cher can get a goal from set pieces. But in terms of getting multiple attack and returns over you know, X amount of weeks. Trippier is the one, and he's very good for bonus when that happens as well. But he will stop you getting other players, and you've got to factor that in. I can't give you a, yes, this player is the best for your team. It's going to depend on which other players you want. Look at my team, for example. I'm going to want Salah at some point, right? So let's just put him in for Bruno Fernandes, because that's one of the, I think, selling Man United players is what a lot of people are going to look at. Even if I want to sell Rashford, I've only got 4.8 million to spend. One of the reasons is I've bought Trippier in this week, and so he would have to go for me to get like, let's just say I want Matoma. I wouldn't bring Matoma in this week, but let's just say I want Matoma. Then I can get a 4.7 million defender in instead. By keeping Trippier, it's very difficult to also have Salah without making lots of other sacrifices. Obviously, one of which could be to drop one of Saka and Son. But then you've only got one midfielder alongside Salah that's 8 to 9 million. And that doesn't feel great either. So for me, a wild card... I'm not guaranteeing it, but I'd be pretty sure right now, at least, that Trippier will be sacrificed. And so if you're someone that wants to hold the wild card until much later in the season for the Man City double or whatever it might be, then getting Trippier now and blocking yourself off from future moves might not be the way. In which case, you might as well just save as much money as possible and go for Botman. But if you're going to wild card soon and you just want to make the most of the next few fixtures, then get Trippier. And that's basically what I've done. So Salah versus Son, if you were selling Saka and had the funds to get Son or Salah directly, which one would you go for this week? And I've seen a few people with that much money in the bank to do this. I'm a little bit jealous. If we disregard wildcard timings, I think the answer has to be Salah because Liverpool's fixtures from game week nine onwards are so good. I know people are starting to talk themselves into not needing Salah because in the weeks where they're going to go against Haaland captaincy they'll go for someone like Saka or Son instead that's fair enough if you want to do that but I think in a lot of the weeks where you can go against Haaland Salah is the best option so for most people I would definitely look at how you're going to get him in soon from game week nine where they play Everton at home down to game week 16 where they got Palace away there's eight game weeks and they play all of Everton, Forest, Luton, Brentford, Fulham, Sheffield United and Palace uh, away in game week 16 the most difficult fixture is definitely man city away in game week 13 outside of that it looks pretty good it's hard to turn down a liverpool attacker and we know that salah is the best one nailed on penalties all that good stuff like some people are considering darwin nunez and i get that i'm definitely going to look at him on a game week 10 wildcard but it's not going to be instead of salah it's probably going to be as well as because i'm never going to be confident in captain in Nunez in any of those fixtures because there's always going to be slight doubts that he's not going to start I agree he's first choice right now but that doesn't mean he's going to start every single game whereas with Salah we know that's going to happen so I think rather than go to Son and then have to get Salah in later you just save yourself a transfer because Spurs away and Brighton away on paper they're not great but we know how good Salah is he can definitely score in those fixtures and like I said it just saves you a transfer down the line now if you bring wildcard timing into it then maybe the answer is a little bit different. So, for example, if you're going to wildcard in game week nine, instead of having Salah for Spurs away and Brighton away, you can have Son for Liverpool at home, which I would say is easier than Spurs away, which is what Salah's got. And then he's got Luton away in game week eight. Now, the reason that is so key is because that is a game week where you could go against Haaland. Like, that week Haaland's got Arsenal away, that is his hardest fixture of the season, right? Given that, obviously, he can't play against Man City, the next hardest team to play against is Arsenal, and it's away from home. So if you're ever going to go against Haaland, game week eight is the week to do it. Okay, Salah against Brighton away is not that bad, but I think Son, if he's still playing number nine, and if he has penalties, we have to keep saying if because Madison could get them. Let's say he does have them. 
and he just plays number nine against Luton. That is a great fixture. And I think the thing that will cement that for everyone is if he does well against Liverpool after doing really well against Arsenal, he's going to be probably, no, I wouldn't say the most captain player in game week eight because a lot of people will still go for Haaland, but he's going to be right up there. So I think if I was wildcarding in game week nine, I'd be tempted to go for Son. And I think if I was wildcarding in game week 10, I'd also be tempted to go for Son because although you miss Salah against Everton at home, you get Son for that Luton game and also Fulham at home in game week 10, which is pretty decent as well. And then you can just wildcard Salah in from game week uh, 10 onwards. So that would probably be my answer. If we forget wildcard timing, I just get Salah now. You're probably going to want him later on anyway. If you're wildcarding in 9 or 10, I'd probably go for Son. If you're wildcarding in game week 8, and I'm not sure which one I would go for, I'd probably look at a different punt on the midfielder instead and not go for either. I guess if I've got to pick one, I'd always go for Salah because he's definitely on penalties, etc. But yeah, that's my answer. Salah long term, Son maybe a little bit better in the shorter term. So talking of wildcard timings, this is a good question. Are you still thinking of waiting until game week 10 to wildcard, even with all the money lost in price rises? And I did tweet about this the other day. It's all well and good having a plan. I'm going to wildcard in game week 10. I'm going to get this team, this bunch of players. But lots of those players are going up in price, and I might not be able to afford that squad by the time we get to game week 10. So I guess the thought could cross my mind of going earlier, but ultimately so much stuff can change between now and then. Think about how many opinions you've had that have changed on plays in the six game weeks we've had so far. We've still got to go through game week seven, eight, and nine before I'm thinking about wildcarding. Someone big could get injured. That would change the picture completely. But also, we've got an international break to come as well. So I'm not massively worried. I will say that if there aren't major injuries, then there is a chance I won't be able to afford the wildcard squad I want. But there's always like a slight downgrade you can make. For example, I'd love to get Matty Cash if I have to go for someone else instead, then that's what I would do, like Pau Torres or Conda. And they're obviously not as attacking. But if I wildcard in game week 10, then the good fixtures for Villa are really game weeks 10, 11, 12, Luton at home, Forest away, Fulham at home. Then they get a bit trickier. So I'm probably not going to want to play that defender that much anyway. So having someone that's a little bit cheaper on my bench is probably going to be easier to stomach when I've got more money to spend in my 11. So there's always different routes that you can go to. I think ultimately, if I was deciding between like 9 or 10 or 10 or 11 or 11 or 12 or whatever it is, and the wild card was going to be exactly the same, then maybe I would go early just to make sure that I can afford it, especially if it improves my team in the short term. But I'm not sure a wild card now would be the same as one in game week 10. For example, if I was wild card in this week, I'd probably go for Morris. I'd probably go for double Newcastle defence. I'm almost certain that will not be the case in game week 10. And that can just change the overall setup of the team. Also, I wouldn't be able to make those short-term punts. So something I've talked about is game week 8. I could sell Saka to Madison, get Luton away and Fulham at home instead of Man City at home, Chelsea away. But then I'd get Saka back in on wildcard. Whereas I wouldn't be able to do that if I now go for a wild card this week and ultimately my team just wouldn't change enough like if you look at what it is right now i change the goalkeepers i'd probably drop my man united players and get salah but i, I don't know look, this could come back to bite me as it has done for most of this season but spurs away and brighton away again they're okay i'm sure salah can return in both of those games but by delaying the wild card i get to keep my man united players for two back-to-back -back home games and then Sheffield united away and the more that people sell them the more differential they become and the more i kind of want to just hold on to them plus i've got son i want to bring in madison and why oh yeah the name uh, disappeared there um i've got son i want to get madison i've got udogi there is a chance i could have triple spurs in game week nine but on a game week 10 wildcard i might just have one if not zero so things could change big over the next three weeks so money is a slight worry for me like areola's going up in price for example but originally i was thinking areola and flecken I could just go Ariola and Turner. That will save me a bit more money. So there's always somewhere else you can go. It's not ideal to lose money on all the players you want to get. But I think there's not, a, there's not enough advantage by going now rather than going later on instead. 
So I know I've already talked about it a little bit, but I'm just going to run through how my team looks for the weekend. So I've got Jordan Pickford in goal for Luton at home. I'm just hoping that he can get one clean sheet either against Luton or against Bournemouth. I don't care which game it comes in. I just like a clean sheet from him at this point before I get rid of him on wildcard. In defence, I've got the double Newcastle with Trippier and Botman against Burnley at home. I know that Botman is flag, but as I said earlier, I'm not worried about it whatsoever. With Trippier, I bought him in for Chilwell on Sunday evening because as soon as the prices changed, I just wasn't going to be able to afford it. So I did take the risk going early. And in the end, it's looking okay because Chilwell is the one that's got injured and Trippier got a rest in the Carabao Cup. So hopefully that move is going to be okay. I've got Issa Kabori for the double game week of Everton away and Burnley at home. The only reason I'm playing him is because I've had him since game week one. For most people, you can just ignore the double game week completely. In midfield, Rashford and Fernandez double up. Crystal Palace at home. I think it's a good enough fixture. The next two are okay as well. One or probably both of them will go on wildcard. But until then, I'm happy to just see through the original plan obviously take into account that i've done chill out to trip here. i only had one free transfer so any other moves are going to cost me a minus four in burmo slight worries about him without rico henry how will brentford continue to perform moving forward it hasn't been necessarily ideal especially against everton but i'm not going to panic about it just now he's definitely going to start he's on penalties etc forest away is okay and then i've got two flagged players in midfield along with botman in defense and that is son and saka I'm pretty certain that Son is going to start, and I'm fairly sure that Saka is as well. So I'm just not sure Saka is going to be at worth a minus four for me. If I didn't have Son, would I maybe feel a bit differently? Possibly, but I can't say that for sure because I'm not in that situation. So the only player that I think I would want this week is Madison. I just don't think he's quite as exciting as Son as an FPL option. And I just don't think it's going to be worth uh, four points. So worst case scenario, Saka misses out completely. Obviously, there is a risk that he's on the bench and he just comes on for a one-point cameo. But I think the upside of playing against Bournemouth away is worth me holding on to him. And if he does miss out completely, I've got Archer on the bench against West Ham away, Estupinian against Villa away, and Udogi against Liverpool at home. I mean, Estupinian and Udogi aren't great this week. I don't see a clean sheet. But it's not like I'm... It's not like I'm really worried about going down to 10 men or anything like that. So my current plan, and things could can change from the time I record by the time we get to the deadline, obviously you'll see it on the deadline stream anyway, is probably to hold on to. I just don't think there's any other midfielders that I'm really concerned about missing. Obviously, if I had the money to go from Saka to Salah, that might be a completely different conversation, but I don't. And if I want to free up that money, it starts costing like minus 8, minus 12. It's just not worth it when I'm going to captain Harlan anyway. Uh, And then up front, Harlan captain because I don't have Morris. I probably would do that anyway, although it's quite close. And then I've got Alvarez as well against Wolves away. That transfer, like most of my transfers this season, didn't go well initially. But I'm hoping that he'll do well against Wolves away. Look at Son. Blanked against Sheffield United. Two goals um, against Arsenal. Botman, to be fair did well the first week I bought him in but I'm not panicking on Alvarez just yet the only thing I would say is if I had two free transfers next week I'd be very tempted to take a short-term punt on a different forward like Arsenal away is not a great fixture for Man City so maybe someone for eight and nine I could go slightly different but I think if I roll this week the plan would be to do Saka to Madison next week in which case I'd probably just keep hold of Alvarez I just think for short-term punts where I can I'd usually prefer to go the midfielders extra point for a clean sheet extra point for a goal and it's not like Alvarez is a problem there were a few questions about whether or not Alvarez would start I just don't see why he wouldn't he started every game so far I think he's playing in a role that no one else is going to come in and take off him right now yes he started in the Carabao Cup but he went off early yes he started against Forest but he also went off early it's not like he needs a rest or anything like that so I think he'll be fine and again if he's not I have got that bench like do I want Saka and Alvarez to both miss out an archer to an extra to come on not really but i think the chances of that happening are so slim that it's not really a concern so yeah chill world to trippy are done happy with the double up kind of excited about seeing gabori even though i'm not expecting a clean sheet for loot in an ivy game i think for now i'm going to keep hold of son or saka unless we get any more news ahead of the deadline which i'm just not sure we will so probably base your decisions off what you've seen in the press conferences so far for me i just I don't know what it is about Arteta and Eddie Howe. I just don't always believe what they say. And I just think the quotes from Arteta about... I I mean, I guess I'm being a little bit of a hypocrite because I'm saying I don't always believe what they say, but I'm taking what Arteta said about Saka as a bit of a positive. 
I don't know. I just think he's probably going to play against Bournemouth and it's a good fixture. So yeah, happy with that. One transfer going into game week eight, getting closer to that wild card. So I'm going to leave that one there. If you've enjoyed the video and or found it useful, make sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. You can also check out Fancy Football Hub. All the links you need are in the description below. Don't forget that the win your mid-league or your money back offer is finishing once we get past the game week seven deadline. So there's still time to get signed up for that. And of course, if you're listening on podcasts, make sure to rate five stars i will be back tomorrow for the deadline stream it's an 11 a.m uk time deadline so i'll probably start streaming about 9 30 hopefully most of you can uh, come and join me for that otherwise good luck in game week seven and i'll see you sunday evening for the knee joke stream